In this video, we are going to discuss stability of Nyquist plot. As I already told you, polar plots are similar to Nyquist plots. So, the Nyquist plots are just extension to polar plots. So, here in polar plots, we are going to consider the transfer function from omega is equivalent to 0 to infinity. That means, we are plotting from omega is equivalent to 0 to infinity. Whereas, in Nyquist plot, as that is extension to polar plot, we are going to plot that plot from minus infinity to infinity. So, we are going to uh, extend that open loop transfer functions plot from minus infinity to infinity. Whereas, in polar plot case, we are taking from omega is equal to 0 to infinity. So, here we are observing the magnitude and phase of a open loop transfer function from minus infinity to infinity. This is only the difference remaining is same as polar plot. So, in initial classes of polar plot, as I told you, polar plot is same as Nyquist plot, but the single difference is there we are taking plot of magnitude and phase from the values of omega from 0 to infinity, whereas here in Nyquist plot, we are taking the plot from minus infinity to infinity. Now, when you are examining about the stability, all these plots are for stability analysis. So, to examine the stability, how a system is said to be stable? When a Nyquist plot is said to be of stable system Nyquist plot. So, here we will see about that. So, now here this is the open loop transfer function of the system. This is g of s is equal to s plus z1 by s by s plus p1. So, here I am having two poles, one pole at origin, one pole at some other place, s is equal to minus p1 pole. And here s plus z1, I am having 1, 0. The numerator of this transfer function indicates zeros and the denominator indicates poles. So, now here, I am going to examine the closed loop transfer function to get the stability analysis. That means C of S by R of S. This is closed loop transfer function. This is open loop transfer function. This is closed loop transfer function C of S by R of S. How we will get this? So, this is as this is negative feedback system. For example, I am considering negative feedback system. Whenever I discuss this feedbacks, as I told you, negative feedback is preferred in control system. So, here the negative feedback control systems transfer function, closed loop transfer function is equal to g of s by 1 plus g of s into h of s. Where h of s is equal to unity for unit negative feedback system. That means h of s is equal to 1 for unity negative feedback system. So, this is equal to g of s by 1 plus g of s. Now, you can see g of s by 1 plus g of s. So, here you know about g of s. You already given with g of s. I am going to substitute that g of s value here. So, now this is equal to s plus z1 divided by s into s plus p1 divided by this is g of s 1 plus again I am repeating this g of s. So, s plus z1 divided by s into s plus p1. I am considering this denominator as f of s. So, here I am considering f of s is equal to 1 plus g of s. So, 1 plus g of s means this one. So, I am cross multiplying s into s plus p1 plus s plus z1 divided by s into s plus p1. This is what we are going to get. So, 1 plus g of s into h of s I am considering like f of s. So, that f of s will be like this. So, now here if you observe 
if this is f of s if this is f of s so if you observe you just imagine this term here so the zeros first point you need to understand is the zeros of f of s are poles of c of s by r of s isn't it you can see zeros of f of s that means these are zeros the zeros of f of s are the poles of c of s by r of s if you imagine this term here this denominator goes to numerator and here whatever the value you are having in the denominator will be like this so whatever the zeros of f of s are there those are mentioned as poles of c of s by r of s in future no need to calculate c of s by r of s for poles you just consider 1 plus g of s whatever is there in zeros place that can be considered as poles of c of s by r of s coming to poles poles of f of s poles of f of s is equivalent to poles of g of s for example the second point you need to understand is poles of f of s are poles of g of s you can see if you observe the poles of f of s then if you observe poles of open loop transfer function these two are same so see here poles of f of s are the poles of g of s and zeros of f of s are the poles of closed loop transfer function c of s by r of s whatever it may be finally after calculating f of s you need to mention the stability criteria if all zeros of f of s are in the right half, left half of s plane then we can say the system is stable when we can say the system is stable when all zeros because these are the poles of open a uh, closed loop transfer function so that's why i'm mentioning like zeros so when all zeros of f of s are in left half of s plane left half of s plane then we can say the system is stable so this is stability analysis of nyquist plot so you can see so no need to calculate c of s by r of s each time just have 1 plus g of s already they will give open loop transfer function just take 1 plus that open loop transfer function and you just consider zeros this time why because you can see here the zeros of f of s are nothing but poles of closed loop transfer function if you want poles of closed loop transfer function no need to calculate c of s by r of s and all these things just by taking zeros of f of s so those are nothing but poles of closed loop transfer function if that poles of closed loop transfer function are in the left half of s plane all the poles of closed loop transfer function are all the zeros of f of s are in the left half of s plane then we can say the system is stable like this we can define the system is stable or not according to nyquist analysis